Hello fellow intelligent investors, my name is René Zellman and when I woke up this morning I checked Twitter and I saw that Charlie Munger, the chairman of the Daily Journal Corporation, he just made a massive bet on a Chinese tech company. And this really caught many of the investing community off guard as no one really expected this move or this purchase. So in this video you will learn everything you need to know about this transaction why many people will be surprised by Charlie Munger's purchase, but why this investment may make sense. So without further ado, let's get started. Have you ever wondered how you can make your hard-earned money work for you? Have you ever dreamed of building generational wealth and leaving a legacy? My name is René Zellman and I'll teach you how you can manage and invest your money with confidence, a long-term vision and without losing your mind. Join me on my journey of intelligent investing and learn how smart people can compound their money effectively and accumulate wealth. Alright, just a little disclaimer before we start this video. Everything I'm about to say in this video is obviously not financial advice. And just for full disclosure, I want to mention that I own a somewhat small position in Alibaba. Also, I can only give you a very brief overview here and mainly talk about Charlie Munger and his motivation for buying the stock. And with that out of the way, let's focus on the news. So, it's always big news in the investing community when Charlie Munger buys a new company. And how do we know that he bought a new stock? Well, Charlie Munger's Daily Journal company manages roughly $200 million and due to the SEC's $100 million reporting threshold, the Daily Journal Company had to file a 13F. And essentially a 13F is a quarterly report that is re required to be filed by all institutional investment managers with at least $100 million in assets under management. So if we take a look at Data Roma here, we can see that Charlie Munger's investment company Daily Journal bought Alibaba Group Holding during the three months that ended on March 31st. The company now holds 165,000 shares worth approximately $37 million. And the estimated average price paid by Charlie Munger here is $245 per share. So you might wonder why this is newsworthy. Well, first of all, we are speaking of Charlie Munger, Buffett's longtime business partner. And he's just a legend in the investing community. And second of all, Charlie Munger very rarely buys stocks at all. He might be the most patient investor in the whole world of investing. It's the first investment made by the Daily Journal Corporation in years. And at age 97, his investment company hasn't bought a single stock for more than six years. Yes, you heard that right, for more than six years. I think that's insane. And before Manga bought Alibaba, he only held four companies in his portfolio. And in fact, two of, of his now five positions are pretty small. So strictly speaking, he only owns three stocks. So he's highly concentrated. And lastly, Alibaba is a tech stock. And it feels like the stock of Alibaba would be a textbook example of a stock Charlie Manga would never invest in as it's simply too hard to understand. And as we will show in a, sec in a second, it's quite a complex business and there are many moving parts to the investment. So if we now take a look at the stock, or I should say the business he purchased. When, well, maybe first of all, what does Alibaba Group Holding do? At its core, Alibaba is an e-commerce marketplace operating in China, but also internationally. And with JD and Pinduoduo, Alibaba is actually facing fierce competition in this space. Overall, with approximately 71%, the Chinese commerce market represents the majority of Alibaba's revenue. However, Chinese and international e-commerce is not all there is to Alibaba. In fact, there are many other segments and Alibaba's cloud business is probably the most well-known by investors. But again, there are other sectors in which the company is reporting yeah, double-digit year-over-year growth rates. Just look at this chart that shows all of Alibaba's equity investments. And this pie chart here shows how complex Alibaba's structure actually is and how diversified its revenue sources are. Here's another pie chart that also gives us a good overview of Alibaba's revenue sources. So clearly, Alibaba is not necessarily an easy business to understand, as there are so many different moving parts to it. 
and you really need to do your due diligence to understand all of the different sectors the business is involved in and how the business makes money in these spaces. There's Chinese and international commerce, cloud, entertainment, logistics, internet platforms for pharmaceutical and healthcare products, payment services, and so on and so forth. And I think for non-Chinese investors in particular, it's important to acknowledge that understanding consumer tastes in different regions can be very challenging or if not impossible if you don't live in that area. Someone living in China will very likely know more about the domestic market, local players and local products, corporate cultures and maybe other nuances than someone living in the United States or Europe. So we won't get further into the business model here. So let's focus on Alibaba's stock. Well, first of all, I would like to take a look at the long-term performance of the stock. Well, Alibaba IPO'd in September 2014. And since then, the stock has slightly outperformed the S&P 500 index with a total return of 140% and an annualized return of 14.3%. More recently, however, since the beginning of 2020, the stock has underperformed. The stock has been under pressure for months, actually. And while the S&P 500 and other major indices are trading above or close to their all-time highs, Alibaba shares are actually down by around 30% from their highs achieved in October 2020. But as you know, I'm a big proponent of the business owner mindset. And thus, how the stock performed in the past, especially the recent past, shouldn't really bother you at all. All you should care about is what is the business worth today? And is today's stock price reflecting this true intrinsic worth? Or is Mr. Market offering, offering us a steep discount? Well, I'm not going to do a comprehensive DCF analysis here because that would be rather time consuming. That's why I'm not going to give you my estimate of intrinsic worth. But what we can do here is maybe we check some relative valuation metrics. For instance, we can take a look at enterprise value to revenue and consider where Alibaba is trading at today compared to its own history. Well, with an EV to revenue multiple of 5.9, essentially Alibaba is trading at a historical low. Even though the stock was trading for less during the coronavirus meltdown in March 2020, at least on a per share basis. And similarly, if we consider Alibaba's EV to EBIT and EV to free cash flow multiples, at least on the surface and compared to its own stock history, the stock seems cheap. The so stock seems to be the cheapest it has ever been in terms of relative valuation. And the most interesting part is certainly the development of the business itself, which has been pretty impressive as this chart here demonstrates. Operating income and revenue have been growing steadily and rapidly over the years. It has an impressive track record of high double-digit growth rates and its five-year annualized revenue growth rate reached 47% recently. And I think this might seem even more impressive if you take into account that the firm has been reporting strong and robust revenue growth during the recent quarters despite a global pandemic. Alibaba's fiscal 2021 Q3 revenue growth, for instance, came in at 37%. And full-year revenue growth is expected to be a very impressive 39% year-over-year. Alibaba's cloud business in particular continues to grow at a very fast clip. It's growing very rapidly and growing its revenue by 50% year-over-year. And last quarter, the cloud computing division was actually profitable for the first time, therefore providing promising prospects for future earnings of Alibaba. So despite Alibaba's notable size, with a market cap of around $600 billion and a dominant market position, the company is still growing revenue at a very fast clip, which justifies higher multiples. And moreover, the firm's 2020 fiscal year is ante anticipated to be another strong year with expected year-over-year -year growth, or revenue growth, of roughly 31%. And lastly, for the sake of completeness, Alibaba has a healthy balance sheet. If we just take a look at its cash position, we can say that it is quite enormous and the company is also having relatively little debt. Now, if we take Alibaba's growth and quality into account, I mean, the firm has been posting 40% free cash flow margins and its 10-year median return on invested capital is 30%. 
Well, if we consider these two aspects, then a free cash flow multiple of 24 seems more than reasonable, reasonable in my opinion. In fact, Alibaba's PEC ratio, so price to earnings to growth, is below 1 right now. And as Twitter user Alexander Eliasson points out, Alibaba provides a lot of optionality too, which we haven't really talked about and which is not necessarily baked into the current valuation. So you might be wondering why the stock has performed so poorly recently and is trading significantly below its all-time high. Well, the company is certainly going through fairly challenging periods. For instance, there was the strange case of Alibaba CEO Jack Ma simply vanishing for a couple of months. And then there are a lot of regulatory worries as there seems to be a growing influence of the Chinese government who seemingly wants to curb the company's influence. For instance, recently Chinese authorities asked Alibaba to sell its media holdings and the government's shocking decision to hold the Ant Group's $34 billion IPO was also shocking to the investment community. Overall, there seems to be a growing concern about the amount of power and independence large private technology firms in China have. And lastly, the Chinese variable interest entity structure, short VIE, worries many investors as well. And I can't get into the details here, but briefly speaking, a legally ambiguous VIE structure basically means that foreign investors don't technically own overseas listed Chinese stocks. Almost every listed Chinese company Western investors can buy outside of China is listed through a VIE structure. Investors who buy shares in Chinese stocks such as JD.com, Alibaba, Tencent and so on and so forth, they don't technically have any ownership stake in the underlying business. Under Chinese law, foreign ownership in most Chinese uh, industries is prohibited. And as a result, it is illegal for Chinese companies like Alibaba or JD.com to have non-Chinese shareholders. So to circumvent Chinese law, a structure was developed, uh, giving Chinese companies access to Western capital and giving Western people or investors access to Chinese stocks. Essentially, Alibaba creates a Cayman Islands listed shell company. So there's no real business, no office, no employees which is also called Alibaba, and then passes some kind of formal agreements that serve to give this yeah, fake company a claim on the profits and control of the assets that belong to the real company. So considering all of these issues and the fact that at its core Alibaba is a tech company, it caught many of the investing community of guard that Munger invested in Alibaba. However, one also needs to point out that Munger has always been very bullish on China. And he has been bullish on China for years, actually. So with this in the back of your mind, the Alibaba purchase is not as surprising as it may seem at first glance. In fact, Charlie Munger invests privately with Li Lu through his fund Himalaya Capital Management. And Li Lu bought a Chinese company in Q4 of 2020 as well. Basically, the fact that Munger is buying Alibaba might give investors confidence that A, Chinese regulation fears are a little overstretched. B, Alibaba's current valuation is attractive, and that C, Li Lu, ha who has boots on the ground in China, has provided Manga with some valuable local insight about the business. However, one should also point out that Li Lu actually sold his Alibaba investment in the first half of 2020. So, what I would say is that if Manga, a true investing legend, bet so heavily on a single stock, as an investor you need to take a look at this stock. Obviously, you can borrow ideas, but you cannot borrow conviction. And thus, you will have to do your own homework before investing in, any, in anything. And as I've said, everything I mentioned in this video is just my own opinion and should serve educational pur purposes. It doesn't represent financial advice. And that's already it for today. As always, may your finances and investments prosper. Good luck. Uh -huh.